Hello everyone, hope you all are doing good. I am Anjana from LearnoHub, the free learning platform where you can study math, science and SSC. Absolutely free at LearnoHub.com. In today's class, we are going to discuss ICSE class 10 physics chapter 4, refraction of light at plane surfaces. We will be discussing the topic real and apparent depths and the consequences of refraction of light. Hope you all are ready. Let's begin. In our previous sessions, in detail, we have discussed about what is refraction. Refraction is the bending of light when light travels from a medium to another medium. The change in the direction of path of light when it passes from one transparent medium to another transparent medium is called refraction of light. We know what happens from light travels from a rarer to denser medium. Rarer medium to denser medium. What happens to the light ray? If this is your light ray, you will be drawing the normal. And when light travels from rarer to denser medium, it bends towards the normal. Okay. Just the opposite in case if the light is traveling from a denser medium to a rarer medium. What happens? Here you have the normal. This is your incident ray. Okay. Light bends away from the normal. This is the basic things. Okay. And here you can see an example. A pencil which is dipped in water. You will be seeing a breakage here. Okay. The straight pencil will be appearing broken here. What is the reason? This is also due to refraction of light. Today we will be discussing in detail about the consequences of refraction. Before that you need to understand two things. What is real depth and apparent depth? To understand what real depth and apparent depth is, take this example. Here you have a coin which is placed at the bottom of a beaker. Okay, And the beaker is filled with water. We know that water is one medium and air is another medium. Here a person is standing here. His eyes is shown. From here when he views this coin, he can see the coin at a new position. Why is it happening? This is due to refraction. This is an application of refraction. Here we have the coin at this point that is at the bottom of the beaker. So the actual depth or real depth is the distance from the surface of the two mediums. So here we have the interface of two mediums from that surface to the point where the coin is placed. Okay, the total distance is called the real depth or actual depth. Now what happens? Because of the presence of two mediums, here we have a set of medium, a pair of mediums, water and air. What happens? Refraction takes place and due to this reason the coin will appear raised. Light rays from this coin, so here we have the incident ray. Light rays from this coin will reach this point. So here we have a change in medium. Till here it was water, after that we have air. We know that when light travels from a denser to rarer medium, when you have water and air, which is the denser medium? Water is the denser medium. Density is more in case of water. And air is the rarer medium. What happens to the light ray then? It bends away from the normal okay so here if i draw a normal what happens to this light ray so this will be the actual path in which the light should go but here there is a change in medium and the light ray will bend away from the normal okay when it bends away from the normal at this point where there is an observer who is observing the coin will have this ray as the refracted ray so he can only observe the object at a point that is the straight path. When you have the refracted ray, from this refracted ray extended, you will get a point. Okay. Only at this position, he can be able to view the coin. Clear? So, this is due to the refraction. Okay. Take another example. You have a fish here. Okay. This is the actual position of the fish. Actual position. A person is viewing the fish from this point. So these are the light rays that are coming from the fish. Okay, from this object, the light rays are, this is your incident ray. There is a change in medium. Again, water and air. Light rays are moving from a denser medium to rarer medium. When you draw normal at the interface of the two medium, the light rays actual path is shown with this dotted lines. So what happens? It bends away from the normal. So this is the new path of light. This is a refracted light. This refracted light will reach your eyes. And you will be able to see the fish at a point which is obtained by extending this refracted ray. Okay. So this is the new position. 
or the virtual position you can see. Okay, so the distance from the surface of the interface of two mediums to the virtual position is called the apparent depth. Okay, that is new position. Here we have the coin at this point. Okay, from the surface of the interface of two medium, this is the distance. So this distance is called apparent depth. Understood what is real depth and apparent depth? Real depth, actual distance of an object from the surface of separation. So this is the surface of separation of water and air. The actual depth of the object from the separation is called real depth or it's also known as actual depth. Apparent depth is a in a medium is the depth of an object in a denser medium as seen from the rarer medium. So here we have the observer in a rarer medium. This appear, the object is appearing at a new point, which means the, from the point of separation, from the distance or from the surface of separation, at what distance is the object obtained or object observed? Okay, this distance is called the apparent depth. Got the idea about real depth and apparent depth? Here, this is your real depth from the surface to the actual position of the fish. And this is your apparent depth, the point or the place, position where the object is observed and the separation of the two medium. Clear? Next, relation between refractive index real and apparent depth. Here you can see a figure. An object is placed at O, which is being viewed by a person who is at a point C. Okay, this is a rarer medium, this is denser medium. Water is a denser medium and here we have air which is a rarer medium. The person will be seeing the object at I. Why? Because of refraction of light. Okay, here we have the real depth and apparent depth. The real depth is the distance between the separation of the two mediums to the point where object is actually placed. Okay, and apparent depth it is the distance between the separation to a point where the observer will be observing the object okay which is point i now here what is ao ao is the real depth and ai is your apparent depth we are considering light rays from this object so light rays when it reaches this point this is your incident ray okay light rays coming from the object we are taking it as the incident ray this incident ray when it strikes the surface of separation, what happens? It bends away from the normal. Why? Because it is traveling from a denser medium to a rarer medium. Okay. So here the light should have gone in this way. But what happens? Because of the change in medium, denser to rarer, it bends away from the normal. Then you will be getting this BC. BC is your refracted ray. And this refracted ray reaches a person's eye. Okay, and then he will be able to see the object at this point I. Okay, how is this I obtained? This refracted ray is extended. Okay, here we are considering a straight line which is a normal. We can call this the normal incidence. Okay, if the person is standing here and viewing, then he will be able to see the object at this point only. Why? Because in that case, there is no refraction. There is refraction happening, but still the angle is 90 degree. Okay. At normal incidence, the object will be appearing at the same point. There will be no shift in the position. So here we have considered the normal A dash A O is the normal. Okay, The object and the image that is observed by the observer will be on this normal line. Clear? Now, the angle that is formed between the incident ray and the normal. Here we have N, N dash to be the normal at the point of incidence. So the angle between the normal and the incident ray is angle I which is angle of incidence. Similarly, we will be having the angle of refraction, the angle between the refracted ray, BC is the refracted ray and the normal BN, we have angle of refraction. Now you can see that A dash O, this lines A dash O and N, N dash are parallel lines. This we have said is a normal, okay. For normal incidence, we are considering this. Also, we have drawn a normal at the point of incident, which is passing through the point of incidence. So, two normals, which means to the surface, both of these are perpendiculars. Both of these are at angle 90 degree, which means they will be parallel to each other, okay. When you have parallel lines, we know that when parallel lines are cut with the transverse cell, we know alternate interior angles will be equal. These are alternate interior angles. 
then corresponding angles will be equal here we have corresponding angles now take this case here we have the angle of incidence okay so this is your angle of incidence okay here we have marked i why because when you consider these two parallel lines here you have a transversal o b can be considered as a transversal transversal is a line which cuts both the lines the set of parallel lines a pair of parallel lines which is cut by a line and this line is called your transversal so when this transversal cuts these parallel lines what happens we will be getting alternate interior angles equal therefore this angle will be i clear similarly when you take these two lines that is our set of parallel lines here we have another transversal ib ib is a transversal it cuts both these lines here we have r to be an angle this is your refracted angle this angle and this angle will be equal what is the reason they are corresponding angles or you can say that this angle r and the angle which is formed here will be equal vertically opposite angle and that angle will be equal to this angle in two steps you can say because they are alternate interior angles clear so we got i here and r here now we'll start the derivation first you have to consider this triangle a o b consider triangle a o b okay in triangle a o b if i need to take sine of angle of incidence what is sine of angle of incidence sine of an angle will be opposite side divided by hypotenuse for this angle i opposite side is ab ab divided by hypotenuse hypotenuse is ob ab by ob okay sin i is equal to ab divided by ob now consider the next triangle consider triangle aib the smaller one aib okay again take the angle sin of angle r sin r will be equal to opposite side opposite side is ab divided by hypotenuse hypotenuse is ib okay ab by ib now this is my first equation and this is my second equation okay equation 1 divided by equation 2 what do we get sin i divided by sin r is equal to ab by ob whole divided by ab by ib the next step we'll take the reciprocal and multiply of the denominator ab by ob into ib divided by ab 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 can be cancelled then we are having ib divided by ob that is sin i by sin r is equal to ib divided by ob next we have studied two laws of refraction first law states that the incident ray, the refracted ray and the normal at the point of incidence all lie on the same plane. Okay, second law, Snell's law. What is the statement? Sine of the angle of incidence to the sine of angle of refraction will always be a constant. The ratio of the sine of angle of incidence to the sine of angle of refraction will be a constant which is a refractive index for a given color of light and for at a given temperature for a material. Okay, now so we will be having sin of angle of incidence divided by sin of angle of refraction is equal to refractive index of second medium here the second medium is air okay with respect to the first medium that is water here we have taken water or you can just write it as mu a m where m stands for any medium okay therefore you will be having sin i by sin r this part can be written as mu a m is equal to ib divided by ob okay now here it is given that b is a point and a is a point what is b b is a point if you are considering b to be very close in actual situation b will be very close to a if b is very close to a then we can approximate that this distance a i and b i will approximately be equal similarly a o and BO will also approximately be equal. That is, AI is approximately equal to BI, AO 
approximately equal to BO. So this can be rewritten IB in place of IB. IB we can write AI or IA. Okay. Therefore, mu AM is equal to IA divided by OB. OB is approximately equal to AO. AO or OA. Okay. So, mu AM is equal to IA divided by OA. Now, we need the refractive index of medium with respect to air. If we need the refractive index of medium with respect to air, what do we get? Here we have, we are applying the reversibility principle, which means mu a m will be equal to 1 by mu m a. Okay, 1 by means we are taking the reciprocal. Therefore, mu m a. Mu m a is the reciprocal of mu a m will be equal to taking the reciprocal of right hand side here we have ia by oa can be written as oa by ia now tell me what is this oa and ia oa this distance it is the real depth and ia is the apparent depth so we'll be getting the refractive index of the second medium the refractive index of the medium here the medium is water okay refractive index of the medium will be equal to and the second medium taken is air Refractive index of medium will be equal to real depth by apparent depth. OA is the real depth and IA is the apparent depth. Okay, understood? So, this is the relation between refractive index, real depth and apparent depth. Clear? Next, we need a term which is called shift. Shift is nothing but how much the object have raised when viewed from a body which is in an other medium. Okay, here the object which was at O is being observed at I. So, this distance which the object has raised is called the shift, okay, which is real depth. Shift is equal to real depth minus apparent depth. Okay? When you subtract the apparent depth from real depth, you will be getting shift. Okay, shift will be equal to real depth now, what is apparent depth? Here we have refractive index is equal to real depth divided by apparent depth, which means we can write apparent depth is equal to real depth divided by refractive index. Okay, real depth minus apparent depth is real depth divided by refractive index okay therefore shift will be equal to taking out real depth which is common into 1 minus here only 1 we have in the denominator here we have refractive index 1 by what is refractive index of the medium mu m a okay refractive index of the medium with respect to air okay so this is the relation to find shift Either you can find real depth and apparent depth separately and then subtract apparent depth from real depth or you can directly use this formula where you need to know the refractive index of medium and the real depth. Real depth into 1 minus 1 divided by refractive index will give you the shift. Okay. The shift by which the object appears to be raised depend on three important factors. First is the refractive index of the medium. When the refractive index increases, when refractive index increases, shift also increases. Now take an example here if you have two mediums okay so this is medium 2 of refractive index mu 2 this is medium 1 of refractive index mu 1 okay you are considering a light ray which is being incident from this medium on the surface okay we are taking the refractive index of second medium to be greater than the refractive index of first medium. Now what happens here we have drawn the normal when light travels from denser to a rarer medium what happens light bends away from the normal okay. Now we have taken the second medium to be having a refractive index which is greater than the that of the first medium which means it will be bending more okay it will be bending more. Now we are considering the normal okay this is a normal incidence when you draw a line 
by extending this refracted ray. So this is the line. Here you will be getting the image. Okay. When you extend this line, here you will be getting the image. Okay. Here we have the object. Image here is at a greater height from the object. Right. Why? Because here the refractive index is higher. When refractive index increases, what is happening? Shift also increases. This is the shift in this case. Here the shift is this. In which case the shift is more? Shift is more when the refractive index of the medium considered as more. Okay. So when refractive index increases, what happens to shift? Shift also increases. Now the second point is the thickness of the denser medium. When the thickness increases, thickness increases, shift also increases. Okay, they are directly proportional. When you increase the thickness of the denser medium which is being considered, the shift also increases. Now the third, the color or wavelength of incident light. Color of uh, incident light. We know that wavelength is inversely proportional to refractive index. Right? That is when refractive index increases, wavelength decreases. Okay, which means wavelength decreases, refractive index increases. When refractive index increases, what is happening to shift? Shift is also increasing. Okay, when you take violet, indigo, blue, green, yellow, orange, red, where is wavelength maximum? Wavelength is maximum for red light and minimum for violet light, which means the refractive index is maximum for violet light. And the refractive index is minimum for red light. In which case is the shift maximum? Shift will be maximum for violet light. And shift will be minimum for red light. Okay, understood? When wavelength decreases, refractive index increases and hence shift also increases. Clear? Next is the apparent bending of a stick under water. So here we have a stick. XOP is the stick or you can take XOP as a pencil in which half a portion is immersed in water. Okay, Some part of this that is XO is a part which is in air and OP is a part of the stick which is in water. Okay, Now what happens as we have taken the case of a coin. In case of a coin, what happens to the coin? The coin will be appearing to be raised because of this refraction. So here in place of coin, let us consider this point P of the stick. What happens to this point P of the stick? It should appear raised when viewed from another medium. That is when viewed from air. Okay. So, this point P will be appearing at point P dash. Okay. That is the end of the stick will be appearing at P dash. So, we have different points on these line. Okay. When you consider this OP part of the stick, each of these points will be appearing to be raised. Okay, here these are the light rays. So, this marked line shows the light ray, incident ray to the surface of separation. Okay, what happens to this light ray? Here we will be having the normal, it bends away from the normal. When it bends away from the normal, you will be getting the refracted ray. When the refracted ray is extended, you will be getting this new point P dash. Okay. Now, when you take the light rays that are coming from another point, so the light rays that is coming from this point of the stick, what happens? Again, this light ray will be reaching at this point. It will undergo refraction and then when the refracted ray is extended, you will be getting a point. Okay. At this point, you, it will be appearing. Okay. New point. When you take this part of the stick, okay, this point of the stick, what happens? Light ray will be incident. On the separation, uh, surface of separation, it will be bending away from the normal because it travels from a denser to rarer medium. When this refracted ray is extended, you will be getting a point somewhere here. Okay, So, the part of the stick OP will be appearing as OP dash to an observer. Okay, This raising is happening due to refraction. So, actually what the person is observing is XOP dash. Okay, There is a bending. This is a straight stick which is appearing to be bent because of refraction. So, XOP when viewed will be appearing as XOP dash. So, there will be a bend created. Same is the reason we have seen a pencil. A pencil which was immersed inside a 
beaker what happens we will be feeling that the pencil is broken we will be feeling that the pencil is in two parts again the reason is the same thing refraction because half part of this body is in one medium and the remaining half is in another medium the part which is in the second medium that is here the denser medium water when appeared when which is observed from another medium will be appearing to be raised clear this is the apparent bending of a stick which is under water next we are going to discuss the opposite case in the previous cases we have taken the person is in a rarer medium and object is in the denser medium here we are considering the person is in the denser medium and object is in the rarer medium okay here what happens is an object placed in a rarer medium when viewed from a denser medium appears to be at a greater distance than its real distance okay here if an object is at o okay object is at o it will be appearing to be at i when viewed from the denser medium in the previous case what was happening the distance is decreasing we know that apparent depth will always be apparent depth is always less than the real depth okay the object was appearing at a height which is above the real depth okay now in this case what is happening this distance is increasing here if you are taking a person to be at this position he is viewing oa let's say oa is a person standing now what happens is that when we are considering a swimming pool a person is inside the swimming pool from there he is viewing oa what happens is oa will be appearing to be of height ia okay and the reason is refraction okay. here what happens is here we have the head of o a now the light rays these are the incident light rays coming from the object light rays coming from the object what happens to this light ray it travels from the rarer medium to denser medium when light ray travels from rarer to denser medium we know it bends towards the normal so this is the actual direction in which the light should have passed but what happens because of refraction it is bending towards the normal okay so this is your refracted ray now when this refracted ray is extended if let us say here the person is okay when this refracted ray is extended so this is a line showing the refracted ray extended you will be able to see this head of the person oa at this point okay not just head every point of this will undergo the same type of refraction and it will be appearing to raised okay so ia is now the depth or now the height at which the object is seen hmm? oa is the actual height clear so this is just the reverse case in the first case what happened the apparent depth you are getting to be less than the real depth in this case the apparent height is greater than the real height okay so here the light rays are coming from a rarer medium to a denser medium okay and the observer is in the denser medium object is in the rarer medium clear okay so when a person views an a person who is on land from water what happens he will be appearing to be of a greater height okay if let's say for example if this person was of 10 cm maybe he will be appearing to be of 20 cm that is height of the person will be increased now we'll be discussing some consequence of refraction of light first is the twinkling of stars so you all have seen stars twinkling in the sky at night now what is the reason is the star changing its position let's see here we have a boy who is viewing the star okay what he is seeing is not the actual star's position but it is an apparent position when you take the atmosphere atmosphere has different layers okay atmosphere has different layers let's say this is the actual position of the star okay so here when you consider the atmosphere at the topper layers there will be rarer medium or it, the density will be less and bottom layers will be having more density here we will be having the denser medium that is this part will be more cooler compared to the topmost layers now when the light rays from the star let's say is incident okay incident on the different layers okay let's take some layers 
So here what happens it is moving from a rarer to a denser medium. Comparatively this layer will be having density more compared to the first medium first part okay so here what happens the light ray will be bending towards the normal or away from the normal it bends towards the normal okay next layer again it will be bending towards the normal again it will be bending towards the normal if you have an observer at this point so this boy is standing at this point where will he be able to see the object at the new position right so from this point this is your final refracted ray from there if you draw a straight line okay here the star will be appearing so actual position of star is this but you are seeing star at a new position so during the night time there will be temperature variation yes so atmosphere's density will also be changing so due to this continuous change or the continuous fluctuation what is happening the star is appearing to be twinkling okay because there is continuous shift in the apparent position of the star the actual position will always remain the same but the light rays will be appearing from different points okay, due to this atmospheric refraction so atmospheric refraction is the reason behind twinkling of stars okay, at different position due to different apparent position which is shifting continuously the person the observer will be feeling that the stars are twinkling on the sky okay second consequence is advanced sun rays and delayed sunset so here the sun is seen a few minutes before it rises above the horizon in the morning while in the evening few minutes longer after it sets let's see this is your real position of sun okay before the actual sunrise this is your real position of sun now here we know that refractive index will be higher okay refractive index when you go to the lower layer of the atmosphere the refractive index will be increasing right so here the refractive index is increasing now what happens if you if the light rays are starting from here at this point continuously when it moves from a denser medium to rarer medium it appears to bend away from the normal again it bends away from the normal bends away bends away so here if you take an observer okay the light rays are reaching at this point from this final refracted ray if you draw a straight line you will be getting it here and the object will be appearing at this point so this is a apparent position actually the sun will be below the horizon because of atmospheric refraction what happens the sun will be appearing at a new position which is being viewed by the observer okay so before the sunrise we are able to see the sun same will be happening during the evening time okay sun would have crossed the horizon but still the sun will be appearing the reason is atmospheric refraction this will be the real position we are actually seeing the apparent position the observer is seeing the apparent position of the sun okay so atmospheric refraction is the reason behind the twinkling of stars and advanced sunrise and delayed sunset some about a 2 minutes difference before the actual sunrise 2 minutes before actual sunrise and 2 minutes after actual sunset we will be able to see the sun in the sky clear this example we all are familiar a coin kept in a vessel and not visible when seen from just below the edge of the vessel can be viewed from the same position when water is poured into the vessel okay so here you are taking a beaker a coin is taken a person is standing here when he is standing here at this position he won't be able to see the coin okay what can be done he can pour some water into this beaker so when water is poured to this beaker what happens refraction takes place and due to refraction the coin will be appearing at a height okay so here we'll be having the real depth and apparent depth and the coin will be appearing to appearing to be at this position and the person will be able to see the coin okay so this is your real coin real position what happens incident rays from these coin reaches the surface of separation of the two mediums it will be undergoing refraction this is your normal light rays traveling from a denser to rarer medium bends away from the normal so this is the direction in which the refracted ray is refracted ray extended you will be getting a position okay at this position the coin will be appearing clear next consequence the print on paper appears to be raised when a glass slab is placed over it so here we are taking a paper and on the print of this paper when you keep a glass slab when glass slab is kept what is happening 
the light from air is traveling to another medium that is glass slab okay so here we have the print okay here we have the letters the letters what happens to the letters the letters when it passes from the glass to air observer will be in air okay when it travels from glass to air what happens denser to rarer medium it bends away from the normal okay and then if for example these are your letters okay here you have the glass incident ray this incident ray will bend away from the normal okay here the observer's eye now when this refracted ray is extended the letters will be appearing at a height okay this is what happening due to this refraction process the light rays which pass through the glass slab after reaching air the observer who is in air will be able to see the letters at a raised height okay now the fifth one a person legs as seen from outside appears to be short when standing in a pool or water tank okay here a person's legs are shown so light rays incident rays taken from the person's foot so this is the incident ray what happens here we have the normal actually it should have moved in this direction what happens because of bending of light light is traveling from water to air denser to rarer medium it bends away from the normal so this is a refracted ray okay this refracted ray when extended straight line is drawn with the refracted ray what happens here we get the new position or the apparent position okay this is the reason why a person's foot will be appearing shorter so this is the actual depth this is apparent depth okay it will be appearing shorter okay so this is your fifth application let us now do problems related to this problem 1 a water pond appears to be 2.7 meter deep if the refractive index of water is 4 by 3 find the actual depth of the pond okay here you have a water pond and it appears to be 2.7 meter deep which means it is not the actual depth the given is apparent depth apparent depth is equal to 2.7 meter what else is given refractive index is given refractive index is equal to 4 divided by 3 we need to find the actual depth how to find actual depth we have the relation refractive index is equal to real depth real depth or actual depth real depth divided by apparent depth real depth divided by apparent depth what we need to find is the real depth right we need to find the actual depth or the real depth how to find real depth will be equal to refractive index mu into apparent depth okay now put the values refractive index refractive index is 4 divided by 3 4 by 3 into apparent depth is given 2.7 okay 2.7 and 3 can be cancelled 3 into 0.9 is 2.7 0.9 into 4 you will be getting 3.6 meter therefore we'll have the actual depth is equal to 3.6 meter so the pond the depth of the pond from the surface is equal to 3.6 meter but it appears to be a depth of 2.7 meters okay second problem a coin is placed at the bottom of a beaker containing water refractive index 4 by 3 at a depth of 12 cm by what height the coin appears to be raised when seen from vertically above here you have a beaker which is filled with water whose refractive index is 4 by 3 given that a coin is placed at the bottom okay and the depth of the beaker is given which is 12 cm what we need to find is by what height the coin appears to be raised okay when viewed from outside you will see that the coin will appear to be raised it will not be in the actual position that is why you will be able to see the coin it may be raised by some height okay this height we have to determine what is this height called this is a shift 
this shift we have to determine how to find shift before that we need to find the apparent depth only after knowing apparent depth subtracting the apparent depth from the real depth will be able to find the shift okay so here what is given refractive index is given refractive index mu is equal to 4 divided by 3 okay real depth is given real depth is equal to 12 centimeter okay we have to find apparent depth first how to find apparent depth we have refractive index is equal to real depth divided by apparent depth okay now we need to find apparent depth therefore take apparent depth to the opposite side crossing we get apparent depth is equal to real depth divided by refractive index real depth by refractive index which is equal to put the values real depth is given 12 centimeter and the refractive index is 4 by 3 taking the reciprocal and multiplying we get 12 into 3 divided by 4 cancelling here we get 3 3 into 3 9 centimeter apparent depth is equal to 9 centimeter so here this distance is 9 centimeter from the surface to the coin where the coin appears okay is 9 centimeter now we can find the shift shift will be equal to real depth minus apparent depth real depth minus apparent depth put the values here the real depth is 12 centimeter 12 centimeter minus 9 centimeter which is equal to 3 centimeter okay this is how we can find the shift so remember in the question it is given that by what height the coin appears to be raised by what height it has raised okay it is not the apparent depth that we need to find it is a shift okay don't just find the apparent depth and leave it as it clear third problem the apparent depth of a liquid in a vessel is 15 centimeter when its real depth is 20 centimeter find the refractive index of the liquid real depth and apparent depth are given we need to find the refractive index real depth is equal to 20 centimeter apparent depth is equal to 15 centimeter we need to find the refractive index this is a direct question refractive index is equal to real depth divided by apparent depth real depth by apparent depth is the refractive index put the values real depth is equal to 20 centimeter apparent depth is equal to 15 centimeter 20 divided by 15 when you take the ratio 5 into 4 is 20, 5 into 3 is 15, 4 by 3 or 1.33. We know this liquid, a liquid with refractive index 4 by 3 or 1.33. Which one is it? Yes, this liquid is water. Okay. Does refractive index have unit? It is a ratio of two lengths. Okay, therefore the unit gets cancelled. Centimeter, centimeter get cancelled. Meter, meter gets cancelled. Therefore, here there is no unit for refractive index. Value is 1.33 or 4 divided by 3. Fourth problem, a coin kept inside water. Refractive index 4 by 3. When viewed from air in a vertical direction appears to be raised by 2 millimeter. Which means the shift is given in this question. Shift is equal to 2 millimeters. Find the depth of the coin in water, which means we have to find the real depth. Okay, let's take the real depth as a x. Let real depth be x millimeters. Okay, then what is apparent depth? Apparent depth will be equal to. The real depth is x millimeter will be having refractive index equal to real depth divided by apparent depth okay we know refractive index mu is equal to real depth divided by apparent depth then what is apparent depth 
apparent depth will be real depth divided by the refractive index. Yes, real depth divided by refractive index. Here, real depth is taken as x. Therefore, apparent depth will be x divided by mu. Okay, here the liquid is water. Therefore, refractive index of water with respect to air. Okay, now we will be having apparent depth x divided by mu. Mu value is given which is equal to 4 by 3. We know shift is equal to real depth minus apparent depth. Real depth minus apparent depth. Okay, here real depth is taken as x. Therefore, we will be having shift 2 millimeter is equal to x minus apparent depth is x divided by mu. Refractive index of water with respect to air. Okay, x is common. x can be taken out 1 minus 1 by mu. Okay, this is the shift 2 millimeter. Or you can directly take the formula shift is equal to real depth into 1 minus 1 by refractive index. Okay. Now we have to find x. 2 millimeter will be equal to x into 1 minus 1 divided by 4 by 3. 4 by 3 is the refractive index of the liquid that is used. Okay. Now take the reciprocal. We will be getting 2 millimeter is equal to x into 1 minus 3 divided by 4. Okay, which is 2 millimeter equal to x into taking the LCM. We get 4 in the denominator, 4 minus 3. 4 minus 3 is 1. We get 1 by 4 here. 2 millimeter is equal to x divided by 4, which implies x will be 2 millimeter into 4, that is 8 millimeter. The actual depth is 8 millimeter. If you have to find the apparent depth, how to find apparent depth? We have apparent depth is equal to real depth divided by refractive index. If in the question you are also asked to find apparent depth, you will be getting 8 millimeter divided by 4 by 3, which is 8 millimeter into 3 divided by 4, cancelling. We get 2 here. And 6 millimeter will be the apparent depth. Here they, we are not asked to find the apparent depth. We just need to find the real depth which is 8 millimeter. Okay. Problem number 5. A coin is placed at the bottom of a glass trough containing water. Refractive index of water is given 4 by 3 up to a height 20 centimeter. At what depth it will appear when it is viewed from air vertically above the coin? Draw a suitable ray diagram in support of your answer. So here you have a glass trough. Okay, which contains water up to a height of 20 centimeter. So, let's say the coin is at the bottom of this cluster. Now, the water's refractive index is given 4 by 3. So, when viewed from outside, the coin, what happens to the coin? The coin will appear raised. Okay, this coin will be appearing raised. Now, we have to find here, we know the actual depth which is 20 centimeter. We have to find the apparent depth. Okay. So, here what is happening? The incident ray from this coin, what happens? So, here this is the separation. This medium is water and here it is air. What happens? Light rays. These are the light rays. Incident at this separation. What happens to this light ray? It bends away from the normal. right? So, it bends away from the normal and reaches the eye. Here this person will be able to view the coin above the original point where the coin is. Okay. Now, let us calculate the apparent depth. We know that refractive index is equal to real depth divided by apparent depth. So, here what is the real depth? actual depth at which the coin is placed. Okay, here the actual depth is 20. We know the refractive index 4 by 3 is equal to 20 divided by apparent depth. Okay, then what does apparent depth? Apparent depth is equal to 20 into 3 divided by 4. 
are taking the reciprocal and multiplying on the opposite side. 4 and 20 cancel, we get 5. 5 into 3, 15. 15 centimeter is the apparent depth. So here, at a depth of 15 centimeter, the coin will be visible. So here we have the incident ray. This is the refracted ray. Okay. So this shows you the ray diagram for your answer. Okay. Here you have the real depth and apparent depth. That's all for today. In today's class, we have discussed about real depth and apparent depth. We also have studied some of the consequences of refraction. Hope you all enjoyed the session. I'll be back in the next session. Until then, stay tuned to Learn Hub. Learn Hub free hai, par best hai. Thank you.